Hey, Sonny here. Um, we're going to go over some more theories. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a uh, music theory video. So before we move on to the rest of the intervals, and we talked about octave, we talked about perfect fourth and perfect fifth, and major and minor third. Now we're going to put them together uh, before we move on and talk about major minor second, uh, flat five, and major minor six and major minor seventh. Let's talk about chords, how to construct major and minor chords. Uh, because what we covered so far, uh, major, minor, third, and perfect fifth, it, those are basic foundation of any major and minor chords. So let's go over that. Um, so if you understand what the intervals now is, you know, major and minor third determine the chord if it's major chord or minor chord. So you know if you know if you hear this, uh, let's just say if C with the E, you know that's a major. If you move down one one fret down, uh, you play the E flat with the C. That's a that's a minor minor third. So that's what determines uh, that's what determines the chord. It's a major or minor. So now if you know the intervals, you can put them together. Uh, and create chords yourself. So, uh, so for example, on this starting from the E string, let's just say if you want to play an A major chord, and one way you can do it, you start from the A note, which is the fifth fret is an A note. Okay, you know the major third is the uh, is the note down to your left, which is C sharp, and then the perfect fifth. The fifth interval of a A would be E right here, so that's a bar chord. So those three notes together, the A major third of A, which is C sharp, and E a perfect fifth. Those three notes consist together would be your A major chord. So you can play it like this. You can go, which is E five. A4 and G2. So you got your A major chord with those three notes. Um, <clears throat> now, if you want, you can do the same thing on a stuff from second string. So you can do the um, stuff from the D, which is the fifth fret on the A string. So you got your D major chord because you have your D, you got a major third of D. Which is the F sharp and A second fret on the D string. So that's a D major chord. Now if you want to move up two two frets, then you have your E major chord. Move up again one fret, you get your F major chord. Okay. Uh, same same concept. Now if you move up, if you start your chord, the triad on the uh, D string. So we start from the, let's just say we play the fifth fret of your D. That's a root note G. So let's just say you stop, you want to play a G major chord or G major triad. So you get your G, you know your G major, uh, the major third of G is a B because your G down one fret, move back half fret, you get your uh, you got your um, major third. Now the uh, perfect fifth of G is D. Okay, so so that would be the the seventh fret on the G, which is the perfect fifth of G. Now instead of playing like that, because you don't you're not getting the chord like this, we can play it like this. So because uh, so basically you have the uh, D5, G4, and B3. So that's the same note as uh, seven fret of your D. All right. So you notice the position is a little different. The shape is different than you play on it. Uh, 
on the A string. The reason why is if you recall from my previous lesson, the bottom two strings always shift up half step. So if you play like if we play on the A string with this triad, if you play the exact same thing up, start from the D from, from the D string. So instead of playing the second fret on the B string, you have to shift it up. You can double check that because your bar chord on the uh, seventh fret of your G string is the same thing as the third fret on the B string. So you no, know, this is your G major triad or G major. If you move, if you move the same shape up whole step, you get A major. Move up whole step again. B major, so basically you just shift the same position up. Uh, same theory, if you start from the G string in a triad, uh, major, uh, let's just say we want to do a, um, a C major on a start from the G string. So the fifth fret on the G string, this is a C note. So this is if we want to do a C major. Now this time, uh, instead of playing over here, on the fifth, fourth fret of your lower string, you'll play the fifth fret to get the major third. Because you remember B string and E string, is shift up half step. So by the time you get down here, everything moves up half step. So instead of playing major third interval like this, that's actually gonna be um, uh, minor third. So your major third would be fifth fret of your G, I'm sorry, fifth fret of your G string and fifth fret of your B string that will give you a C major third. You add a fifth to it. So if you do a G5, B5, and E3, you get your C major triad. Move up whole step, you get your D major triad, or D major chord. Major that way, so forth and so forth. So that's those are the triad shape of chords. So now you take the same same concept. Um, uh, you won't do a minor triad. You only all you have to do is just change one note because your root note and your fifth, your perfect fifth don't change. They are the same notes. The only notes you're changing is the major third to minor third. So let's talk. For example, we talked about the um, the A major triad on the low E string position. So that'll be E5, A4, D2, that's an A major triad. So we take the same thing, we're only changing the uh, A string instead of playing 4th fret, we play the 3rd fret. So now we have an A minor triad or A minor chord. And if you move down, same thing. So instead of the D major triad, which is your A, uh, A5, D4, G2. So if you keep the same fingering, but you, you're just moving your, uh, instead of playing the D4, you play the D3. You get your A minor, you got D minor triad, or D minor chord. Move down the same thing again. We would start from the, uh, we, previously, we talked about a G major triad or G major uh, is this one, uh, which is D5, G4, and B3. Now, we want that's the G major triad or G major. We want to, instead of playing the uh, fourth fret of your G, you play the fifth fret of your G, then we have a G minor triad. So, G major triad. G minor triad. A major. If you shift the whole step, G major. Lift your finger up. A major. A major. A minor. So A major. A minor. All right. Same thing we we talked about. We play a D major over here. D minor. Same thing. If you move it up, you get your A E major. Whole step up. Changing one finger, you get your minor. 
Uh, same thing if you start on the G string, your triad, uh, your C major triad, which we talked about is G5, B5, and E3. Now instead of playing the uh, B5, you lift your pinky up, you play the uh, B4 fret, 4 fret on the B string. And now we have a C minor triad. Move up whole step would be a D minor triad. So you got your C major triad, change one finger, C minor triad, D major triad, uh, it will be G7, B7, E5, change one finger, now we're using G7, B6, and E5, and we have your E minor triad, same, same concept. So, so that's the basic of the triad. That's one way to find your chord. Uh, now, we want to get to talk about bar chord based on that. So we talked about the perfect fifth. So we know what a bar chord is, right? So let's just say the C major bar chord, or C a C power chord, uh, would be A3, D5, and G5. That's your power chord, which consists of perfect fifth and perfect fourth. Now, now we know that the major, let's just say if you want to play a C major chord, now you know the C major, the major third of C is a E, okay, which is second fret of your D string. But if you do an octave higher of the same note, exact same note higher, which is the fifth fret of your B string. So that was that's, that's still your third, your major third of C. So if you play a C major, a C power chord, uh, and now you add a the fifth fret of your B string to it, suddenly we have a C major uh, chord. Because you have your power chord, now you're adding a major third. So that's just another way of playing this, but we just play it octave higher. You hear the difference? It's octave higher, same note. Alright, now take the same concept. Remember, a minor is half step down from the major. So, so if the fifth fret on your B string is your major third on the C chord, then naturally half step down the fourth fret would be your minor third. So if you want to play a C minor chord, you would do the C bar chord, power chord. Instead of playing the fifth fret on the B string, you, you use your um, middle finger and play the fourth fret on the B string. You can hear the difference, there's a C minor. Chord. Now you can add the last string because you, you bargain the index finger, you play the last note. And so, what is that note? Well, that just basically is a perfect fifth in an octave higher because that's that note right here on the high E third fret. It's the same note as the fifth fret on the D string. See, it's just an octave higher. So, you're just playing basically same note and play a little higher, an octave higher. So your C major, C minor. So you can hear the you can hear the tonality change from happy to sad. All right, and the same if you move up the whole, uh, you take that same uh, shiftable position. And uh, I assume everybody everybody's familiar with power chord. So if you play a C over here, you move up, then you get your D. The whole step up is a D power chord. Same thing, if you add the 7th fret of your B string to the chord, suddenly you have a D major. Now if you take the 7th fret, which is a major 3rd of D, you move down half step, that would be a major uh, minor 3rd of D. See, it's a double D minor chord. So another way you can look at it, so Again, if you play the a D major, inter, major third interval, 
uh, A5 and D4. And the D4, an octave higher, would be a B7. So it's a major. Now if you see the D minor third interval is your D5, I'm sorry, A5 and D3. If you look at, if you look at a D3 octave higher would be your sixth fret of your B. So that's why it's the same note. So that's a major, major third of your D. So D major, D minor. Again, you can add the last note, which is an octave higher of perfect fifth. It's just an extra note with the same notes in the chord. So that's how, uh, hopefully, that you can understand better between major and minor and how power chord is constructed. And same same concept. Let's say if, let's say if you want to do a power chord on a on the low low E string. So let's just do this position right here. So this is a G power chord. Would be your third fret of your E, fifth fret of your A, and fifth fret of your D. So that's your G power chord. Now you can add um, fourth fret of your G. That would be a major third of your G. Let me show you how, how, how it is. So your G note on the third fret of your E. Major third of G is the second fret of your A string, which is a B note, all right? Now, a B note, an octave higher, would be your fourth fret of your G. So you know, the, so the fourth fret is a major third of G. So you can see the whole part, and then you get while you're doing that, you can bar barring down the rest of the string. Just play the whole thing down. You get your G major power chord or G major bar chord. So you may ask, you know, why the last two string, which is the third fret of your B and third fret of E? Well, the third fret of your B is an octave higher of your perfect fifth of your G. Okay. And the third fret of your E is the same note as your G, so it's a root note. So G just octave higher. Because you can do a G at the third fret of your E string. You can play your G on a D string at the fifth fret. You can also play the G on the uh, <clears throat> high E string. So you cover in two octave, low G higher G and a really high G so when you do the bar chord you're basically playing three G notes right so your bar chord right now would be just to refresh your memory the bar chord we have is E3 A5 D5 G4 B5 and E5 Okay, so now what about minor? So this is a G major. Well, simply to move the G uh, major third down half step, all you have to do is lift up your middle finger. So instead of playing the fourth fret of your G, now you're playing your third fret of your G, but you bar in it with your index finger. So now you have a G minor. So all you have to do is change one finger, your index finger, you keep your index finger on the fourth fret of your G. G string, that's a G, G major. If you lift that up, uh, your index finger is holding down the third fret of your G string, it'll become a G minor. G major, G minor, same thing if you look half step up, do the same position. A major, lift up your index finger, A minor. So that's how uh, how we do it, major and minor in the bar chord shape, and uh, you can also apply to uh, you can also do it like this too. So we talked about we talked about G major at the uh, fifth position on a D D string D. 
So it's D5, G4, B3, and E3. So that's, now, just so you know, uh, you can probably notice that this is really not a new chord. Basically, you just take the G bar chord. If you take away the top two notes, you're playing the bottom four note. You can play it that way as well. So you still have that G major. Now, if you lift up your middle finger, so, so if you bar a third fret of your G, B, and E together with your index finger and with your in, uh, ring finger on your fifth fret of your D, you still have a G minor. So G major, G minor. So it's the same thing as this. I'm just moving the top string. So, uh, uh, so hopefully that give you, that will clear up on about how to find your own major and minor chords. So as long as you know the root note. So let's just say if you know any root notes you want, you know the how to position yourself to find a major third. If you know the position, you find a major uh, perfect fifth. Then you have yourself a chord because now you have a third and a fifth. Or minor. So what we have here is what uh, is an E major, E minor. Uh, thanks for watching.